Here's an idea. Game of Thrones owes its success to piracy. And for anybody who is concerned about spoilers, we're not gonna purposefully spoil anything, but we are gonna be showing a bunch of media and pictures from the show. So if you're worried, maybe watch this after you've finished seasons one and two. Winter is coming. Actually, winter is just leaving, but what is coming is Game of Thrones. The season premiere of everyone's favorite epic saga of royalty, rivalry, chivalry, combat, and Peter Dinklage... I'm telling mother! ...is right around the corner. And if you're anything like me, my friends, my family, the guy who sells me insurance, my barber, my accountant, or basically anyone, you are very excited. Based upon George R.R. Martin's magnum opus and produced by HBO, over 10.3 million people watched every episode of the first two seasons of Game of Thrones. The collected season one DVDs was the 14th best-selling DVD of 2012 and broke all of HBO's first week of sales records. It's won not only the hearts and minds of people who think chainmail is a reasonable fashion choice, but also Emmys, Golden Globes, SAG Awards, and another slightly more burdensome honor. Game of Thrones was the most pirated television show of 2012. With almost 4.3 million downloads per episode, the number of people paying the iron price for Game of Thrones is almost half the number of legit viewers. Surprisingly though, Game of Thrones director David Petrarca thinks file sharers are an asset. At the Perth Writers Festival, Petrarca said that television shows, quote, thrive on cultural buzz maintained by people who torrent the bits. First, that has to be a real bee in the bonnet for anti-establishment downloaders. Turns out you guys might be helping the man. But more importantly, what? I mean, let's not mince words here. Game of Thrones is about as hard to get a hold of as it is likely that your favorite character is gonna get beheaded. Unless you have HBO or are able to steal your parents' HBO Go login, a process which I know nothing about, so don't ask, mom and dad. Can I get the HBO Go password again? You know I shouldn't keep giving you the password like this. I mean, it's basically stealing. You're sort of out of luck until the DVDs are released. And finding out that a show stuck behind a paywall has high piracy numbers isn't exactly news. Dexter, Breaking Bad, and The Walking Dead were all top pirated shows last year. They were also crazy like the Mad King popular, and insert joke about the wall being a paywall here. Is it possible though, like Petrarca said, that all of those things are related? From the classical view at least, piracy is stealing. How could it possibly be good for a show? Even the show's stars seem skeptical. Michelle Fairley, who plays Catelyn Stark, has said that the rampant piracy of the show has been a real double-edged sword. Do you guys, do you guys see what she did there? Calling piracy a double-edged sword? Because it's Game of Thrones. They use swords. <laughs> Nikolai Coster Waldau, who plays Jamie Lannister, said to the BBC that he hopes pirates will buy DVDs, but he knows, quote, they won't. Well, good news, Kingslayer. You might be wrong dead wrong. At least several studies show that people who download media are also a lot more likely to support it, like with cash. The German Association for Consumer Research found that users of streaming, torrent, and file sharing sites go disproportionately to the movies. Disproportionately like a lot, like they go to the movies all the time. A study of the relationship between the box office sales numbers of targeted audience films and the shutdown of mega uploads suggests, if anything, file sharing encouraged people to go see movies. And it's not just the cinema either. The American Assembly shows that in both the US and Germany, those who download music are more likely to have a larger collection of legitimate media than those who do not download music. All of these sources in the doobly-doo, by the way. But you know, tracking which bits are being torrented and how many of them contain scenes of someone complaining that they've lost their dragons is tough. So so unless you believe the numbers posted by Mega Upload, The Pirate Bay, or the German Association of Consumer Research, all of this might be a bunch of Hodor. I'm sure the MPAA and the RIAA both have a bunch of studies that state exactly the opposite. But at least one thing is true. HBO knows it has a problem. Not a piracy problem, but an access problem which results in piracy. International airing delays, lead times for legit downloadable episodes that are longer than the shivering sea is cold, and a crazy paywall that requires a cable connection? What is this, 1995? Well, before you join me at the scoff party, let's talk about the $1.4 billion you can estimate that HBO made last year from cable subscriptions alone. And with each season of Game of Thrones costing in the neighborhood of a cool 60 million, it's hard to see them giving up that guaranteed cable loot. But here's the other thing. I might not have cable, so I maybe downloaded Game of Thrones. But then when the DVD sets come out, I buy them. And the books, of course, and the board game, and probably even the beer once it's out. Maybe I'll even buy the perfume. And then I'll watch, use, play, drink, and smell these things, maybe all at once, with my friends. None of whom have cable, but all of whom, much like me and the Lannisters, 
always pay their debts. What do you guys think? Does Game of Thrones owe some of its success to piracy? Let us know in the comments. And if Jon Snow knows one thing, it's that you should subscribe to Idea Channel. You know nothing, Jon Snow. I know a lot of people like it, but I feel like the fourth season of Community is just a knockoff of the first three, so. Let's see what you guys had to say about knockoffs and brand value. To Emrix4271, little known fact about Dan Brown, he actually walks around with phone books taped to his shoes. So yes, hacks, I guess. James Woods with four O's asks a really great question about what happens when a larger company rips off a smaller company. Um, and I think that that proves that the smaller company's design or product actually had value. They see it as a profitable thing. The complication comes when from the outside trying to figure out who ripped off who because we might always assume that the smaller company is ripping off the bigger company, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a really interesting uh, relationship to plumb the depths of. Met Josh from Gave points out the existence of something called Veblen goods, which are goods whose desirability raises with their price so that a thing that is more expensive will automatically have more cultural capital. So this is really interesting. We'll pause so you can read this comment. Uber Chops makes explicit a point that we only alluded to, which is that a lot of times when you're buying diverted goods, diverted is just a nice way of saying stolen or hot. So, yeah. To Death the Kid's Wife 8, we're working on an angle about narrative and addiction, but we're actually uh, really curious, what would you guys be interested to hear about anime? It's a thing that we're not super versed in, so suggestions welcome. Let us know. Send us an email um, or just leave a comment. Jacob Rogers points out that um, knockoffs, especially cheap knockoffs, are really, really great at uh, disassociating a brand from its value that you can have a bad product representing a great product and that in that way they're not adding value even a little. 2 max 27588 um, Andrew the producer of Idea Channel let me know that Hydrox actually is the original and Oreo is the knockoff. So if that doesn't blow your mind I don't know what will. 2 Iara Weltreach I want to know how and why you disagree. Let us know. But Thank you for disagreeing. To my name is Geraint, Macklemore actually has a term for this. He calls it getting tricked by a business. I host a show uh, for PBS called Idea Channel. Y yes. To Rihanna, actually um, some of Lana Swartz's research shows that people who are buying knockoffs aren't always doing it because they're trying to save money. It's sort of like um, they're doing it because it's an adventure in consumerism, that they have to get involved in a situation where they can buy a knockoff, whether it's Canal Street or like a purse trading party or something like that. So uh, yeah, this is one of those weird things that's, that's like, it's logical, but not really true. Yeah. Idea Channel subscribers are actually so great that when you add them up, you get 104% of them. So this makes perfect sense. This week's episode was made with the awesome help of these people, and the tweet of the week goes to Swift underscore Victory, who pointed us towards an article about the upcoming difficulties related to Google Glass.